So now we're going to get into how translation occurs. And so the, the nucleotide sequence in the RNA, the messenger RNA, is going to determine um, wh what region of the messenger RNA is actually going to be translated. So we have a region um, where the ribosome binds. There we go. And then we have that start codon and we have that stop codon. So this region between the start and the stop codon is what's going to actually be translated. Ribosomes serve as your translators. So they are the protein or they are the cellular machinery for protein synthesis. Prokaryotic ribosomes consist of 30S and, and 50S subunits, whereas eukaryotic consist of 60S and 40S subunits. And so you have a large and a small subunit. You can see those here. This part here would be that large R, G, E, and then down here, small, right? They come together on the messenger RNA and then they start producing or bring allowing I should say the transfer RNAs to come in with the proper amino acids. So a transfer RNA is um, the carrier for the amino acids. It contains an anticodon that allows it to bind to the, the proper region on the messenger RNA. And then on top, it carries the amino acid coded for in the messenger RNA. Um, when I draw mine, I typically draw a little stick figure that looks like this. And then you have that anticodon down here and you have the amino acid up there, okay? So translation in prokaryotes can begin before transcription is complete. The reason for this is because everything is occurring within the cytoplasm. In eukaryotes, we have transcription occurring in the nucleus. Translation doesn't occur in the nucleus, it occurs in the cytoplasm, so you can't start translation until after transcription is complete. So there are three steps to translation, initiation, elongation, and termination. Initiation occurs when the ribosome comes together on the messenger RNA. So you have that small subunit, which you see down here, hold on, right there, and you have that large subunit right here. There are three different sites. There's an E site, a P site, and an A site. The P site is the very first site where transfer RNA comes in, carrying with it the first nucleotide or the first um, amino acid coded for in the uh, protein. And in general, the first nu or the first amino acid is always going to be methionine or an altered form of methionine. That's going to always start translation. So methionine is the start codon. Once the methionine attaches, then another transfer RNA carrying the next amino acid is going to move into the um, A site. So now we have methionine and we have proline. They're sitting next to each other. At this point, the methionine and proline are going to produce a peptide bond. And the methionine is going to be released from the first transfer RNA, moves and attaches to the proline. So now we have that first peptide bond. And this allows this amino acid, or this transfer RNA here, to be able to be released. It no longer has a job. So it moves to the E site, the um, transfer RNA that carried the proline and now the methionine moves to the P site, and the A site is open for another transfer RNA to come in with its own amino acid. That first transfer RNA is able to be released and can go and pick up another methionine. So this is going to continue every time a new um, transfer RNA with a new amino acid enters that A site. We're going to produce another peptide bond and shift all of the um, polypeptide to that A site onto the new amino acid. And this 
continuously produces this longer and longer polypeptide of amino acids and allows the transfer RNAs to move off and pick up new amino acids. This is going to occur until we hit a site called the terminator sequence. So UAG is one of the three terminator sequences. And so when we hit that, there's, there's no um, transfer RNA or amino acid that is going to be coded for. And so once we hit that, translation stops. So when translation stops, the amino acid sequence, that polypeptide, can then fold up into its functional form, whatever protein it is. The ribosomes can come apart and um, they're free to, to attach to a new um, messenger RNA. The messenger RNA can be read again until it is degenerated. And so now let's look at my copy of translation. So we've made a transcript earlier. So I, I only have two sites. I only put the P and the A site. The E site is where the um, transfer RNAs just leave. And so the pink are the transfer RNAs, yellow are the ribosomal RNA, and that green line is your messenger RNA, okay? So as soon as the ribos, uh, as soon as we have a um, transfer RNA with methionine in the P site and another one in the A site, we have that transfer of the amino acids, a peptide bond is formed, and then this is going to the initial um, one that was in the P site is going to move over. Uh, we're going to have another amino acid or I'm sorry, not amino acid, another transfer RNA being able to move to that A site. Eventually it's going to move to the P site. We'll have new amino acids moving in and we're constantly just going to keep moving them over and I'm just kind of showing you this until we hit a stop code, which this is a stop code. And once we hit that stop code, then the amino acids um, can fold up into their functional protein. The RNA can leave, a, or the ribosome can leave and produce a new, or can read another messenger RNA. The transfer RNAs can pick up new amino acids and wait for another protein synthesis to occur. Um, and the messenger RNA can be retranslated until it's degenerated. So I'm going to stop here. It's been an eight-minute minute video, and we'll talk about some differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic gene expression in our next video. Bye.